So we're going to uh, take a 10 minute break now before we get into our final session. Uh, please do be back promptly so we can look at our approach to the individual accounting issues that uh, MPOs face. So it's 10 past the hour now, according to my clock. So if we can come back at 20 past, that'd be super. Thank you very much. See you in 10 minutes. Thanks. Stretch your legs um, for a couple of minutes. Um, I think as Sam said at the beginning, so a long meeting and we do appreciate that we've got you sat still for a long time. So uh, I hope you've welcomed the opportunity just to, to get up for a minute um, and uh, grab a drink and whatever. Um, but I want to move us on to the final part of our meeting um, today. Um, so the final uh, section of the meeting is looking at part two of the consultation paper and we're going to look at the overview section. Um, the overview describes how we identified MPO specific issues, um, what they are and how we prioritise them for inclusion in the guidance. Uh, as I said at the very beginning, um, we're gonna, not going to be looking at the individual issues um, today. There'll be separate outreach on that later on this year. The consultation paper talks about the different sources that we've used to get to our long list of issues. Uh, and this includes previous research, input from standard setters, um, and those from people who sit on our advisory groups. And from these sources, we've created a long list of issues. And to help us think about those, we've grouped them into issues that are about the reporting entity, issues about incoming um, and outgoing resources, issues about the balance sheet, uh, and finally, issues about the presentation, content, and scope of financial statements. Um, if you uh, can quickly count them, you'll see that we've got 22 issues that has, have been identified from our research to date. You'll also see that these are quite diverse too. They range from the definition and disclosure of fundraising costs to how to account for inventory that is being held to dis distribute onto um, service recipients. Uh, and as part of the consultation paper, we want to know if we've captured all of the issues, if there are any that are missing um, that should be on the list, but equally, if you think that there are things that perhaps shouldn't be on the list because they don't have, um, uh, they're not a significant issue um, for you. Um, with such a long list of issues, we've needed to decide where to prioritize our efforts to achieve the highest impact for the first set of guidance. Um, so to do that, we want to try, we want to, to focus on those issues that could add the greatest value globally within the project timeline and resources. And so we've used four criteria to help us assess which are the highest priority issues. Um, we've used prevalence, uh, and by prevalence, we mean how widespread is the issue globally? Do we see it in every country, every continent? Um, what, what's the significance of it? We've also looked at consequence. Uh, and in terms of consequence, we're thinking about the users of financial statements. So if we don't address the issue that's there, would it impair the ability of the reader of financial reports to obtain useful information for accountability and decision-making purposes. So that impacts actually on users of financial statements. Um, the third criteria is about demand. And that's a question of, has the issue um, been raised by multiple stakeholder groups or a single stakeholder group internationally. So we're looking at kind of the push element um, here, are people really wanting to see a resolution of that issue? And then the final criteria is about feasibility. Can we get to a technically sound solution within the time and resources available and not adversely impact on, on the, the project? So for example, we could spend all of our time on only one issue uh, and reach a technically sound solution 
for something that's prevalent, um, there's a demand for and for which there are consequences. Um, but we might be better off spending our time on more issues than, than that single one. So that, that kind of feasibility issue um, is also there. So we have prioritized um, those issues that rate most highly across all of the criteria. Uh, and as part of the consultation paper, we're asking actually, is this the right way to do it? Are we asking the right questions to help us focus on the right issues for NPOs? Having applied um, those criteria, um, the topics that we um, determined to have the highest priority are shown in this slide in front of you now. There are 10 topics that we're proposing to include in the first set of guidance. And if I can just pick out a few of those, um, we're, we're proposing to include non-exchange revenue. And this topic would include grants received, um, cash donations, gifts in kind, and services in kind. Uh, and based on our understanding of the issues associated with, with um, these types of, of revenue, we would cover uh, when should these types of revenue be recognized? How do you turn, determine the value for gifts and services in kind? And what would need to be covered in disclosures? So that's one topic. Uh, we're also proposing to look at the classification of expenses and what sort of analysis should be used where, uh, and, and picking out that international standards allow analysis by nature or function. But for MPOs, do we prefer one analysis over another? Or should there be defined categories for nonprofit organizations, all of which would um, aid consistency and comparability? And another area we're looking at is financial statement presentation, where we look at how funds with restrictions are presented in the financial statements. Uh, and this includes what is commonly termed fund accounting. And we've identified these 10 issues because of those criteria. We say that they are prevalent. There are consequences for readers if these are not addressed. There is a demand globally, and we think we can address these uh, topics within the project resources. But the consultation paper seeks views on whether we've actually prioritised the right ones, um, which will be really important for how we take the work forward. So that's kind of the introduction to the overview in part two. Um, before we go back into breakout groups, um, I just wanted to touch on, on donors. It's come up a number of times uh, today, and we have heard a lot about the implication of donor requirements. Um, I just wanted to kind of reiterate what Sam said at the very beginning, that we have created a donor reference group that we will be using to better understand the perspective of donors and the extent to which we can use this project to get greater consistency. So in thinking about these topics, we are trying to cover off um, the donor perspective. And I just wanted to draw attention to that before we kind of move into the questions. So um, for the questions for this uh, area, there are three um, potential questions. Um, the first one is about for, what are your top three financial reporting issues? And why are they the most important to resolve? Uh, and this links back to the criteria that I've just talk, talked about. What, what is it about your top three that makes them most important? So that's the, the first question. The second one is about the most significant accounting issues in your jurisdiction. What, what are the breadth of the topics that we uh, would expect to see? And the final question is about how common solutions to accounting issues could improve uh, accountability and decision making. So those are that, those are the questions for the final um, session. I shall stop sharing my screen, uh, and Joanne will move you back into your breakout groups for this final session. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in twenty minutes' time. Thank you. Still have a few people still to come. Yes, there's one group that is still 
the lot left. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. If they're having a good conversation, we don't want to stop them. Okay. Everyone is back and go ahead. Fantastic. Great to see you all again uh, for the final plenary um, session. Um, so again, it would be great to get feedback um, uh, from your group discussions. So uh, if I can start with you, Joyce, if you can tell us about your group and what you were looking at. Thanks, Karen. Um, in our group, we looked at, let me just post the questions here so that everyone will be able to see. Uh, in our group, we looked at uh, what are the most significant accounting issues um, in your jurisdictions. Uh, and we also, we also looked at how do this differ between donor and uh, regulator reporting requirements and would the proposed guidance model provide solution to these issues in your jurisdiction and uh, Nua is going to provide feedback for us. Great, thank you. Go ahead Nua. Thank you Josie. Hi Nua. Hi, how are you? Hi, good, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the, I will summarize the, I will summarize the, our uh, points. Here I have actually many points related to the significant uh, accounting issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one re related to the providing the original documents because, uh, for example, here in Turkey, we are support the implementation projects inside Syria. So the all uh, original documents inside Syria. So we have to provide them here to here to in Turkey uh, to submit them to the path site for the government and for the donors. This is the first issue. The second one related to the exchange rate. Uh, actually, uh, uh, for here in Turkey also, uh, our expenses are paid in Turkish lira. So, and we have to report our financial statement to the donors in US dollars. So we have uh, losses in the exchange rate actually because uh, several donors, uh, several, we have, we have uh, several requirements related to the exchange rate. Uh, one of them uh, depends on the info euro, for example, and others uh, depends on the actual exchange rate. So and this, this uh, method causes a lot of losses actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the third uh, point related to the uh, uh, actually, the matching between the narrative and the financial report. Uh, normally, there's a lack between uh, the narrative and uh, the financial report. So uh, we hope to uh, to to to, ha to have uh, an inclusive uh, guidance for the all sites. Actually, actually, for the program as well, for the HR and the procurement as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, 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 the other point related to the accounting basis uh, for the government, uh, we submit our reports in accrual basis, but for the donors, it uh, depends on uh, some of them uh, depends on the accrual basis and others on uh, cash basis and uh, we, we also we, we follow the modified uh, accrual basis. For, for example, for the revenues, we, we, we depend on the cash basis, but for the expenses, we record our expenses as actual basis, especially the significant expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, the other point uh, related to the remote management. Uh, remote management is so difficult because we have uh, huge stuff inside Syria and it's uh, so hard to remote them uh, our our stuff inside Syria. Uh, there's no control. Uh, act, just we 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 follow them uh, through the through the uh, programs. 
as uh, Zoom and uh, etc. Mm -hmm. So this uh, caused a lot of uh, lack of information actually between the field and here the uh, headquarter. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the other point uh, related in the information because uh, there's a lack of, uh, uh, in the information and thus cause a, a lack in taking the decisions in, in some times. Uh, here I'm talking about the information that's we in, in the field actually, not mm -hmm. in the headquarter. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, the other the other point related in the related to the gift in kinds. Uh, we received a lot of gift of kinds from the donors, and we don't have the specific rate of them. So we, we can't record this uh, gift in kinds in our uh, systems because, because we don't have the specific amount, uh, amount of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, for, the for the proposed guidance, uh, as I mentioned, I hope to have, uh, to have uh, an inclusive uh, guidance for the all uh, th sites, actually. Also for the government. Uh, for the uh, local authorities inside the, in the field, actually. So uh, when we publish this uh, guidance, we have to take uh, inclusive training for the all sites. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that's all from my end. Thank you, over. Thank you, no, I'm glad that's all. That's a, that's a very long list of um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for that. And, you know, it's, uh, it, it's always really interesting to hear how issues are expressed because sometimes we can think about an issue and we think about it in the context of our experience uh, and hearing about it in the context of your experience is just so really, really helpful. Um, so um, thank you for that. Some, some really good points um, you've made there. Uh, and as before, if anyone wants to add to what Noor has said in the chat, please feel free to do, do that, add anything that you, you would like. Uh, and finally, Fanny, could you um, talk about your group, please? Yes, of course. Um, so our question was, uh, what are the most significant accounting issues in your jurisdiction? Um, we, Mehmet has accepted again to um, be our speaker and our speaker, sorry. And um, yeah, we had very interesting conversation. Again, in our group, we had people from Turkey, Russia and Georgia. And we started having a bit of a thorough conversation about exchange rate also. So All right, I'll okay. Mehmet to explain. Okay, okay. great, thank um, you. Thanks, Mehmet. Um, hello everyone. Before um, highlighting the issues, just I would like from our experience in Turkey, um, um, if the international financial reporting standards for non-profit organizations took into consideration um, the situation similar to the Syrian situation where we are working remotely uh, using the cross-border methodology, uh, because there are specific challenges and maybe issues to be addressed uh, for that. Um, so the, the main issues we raised, the first issue related to the exchange uh, rates, um, Mr. Noon highlighted it, but I, I will mention it in much more detail. So uh, one of the most challenging issues that as we are reporting to our donors, so uh, and we are dealing with different currencies, so some of our donors ask us to use the United Nations operational exchange rate, the others asking us to use the Awanda. Uh, also, we are committed to um, uh, report using the, the central bank rate and many different ways uh, we need to use. Uh, and this affects, uh, honestly, uh, our practices and exposure us to uh, some cases to severe uh, losses. And if we reflect that on the cross-border methodology, so here in Turkey, uh, we are converting from any uh, foreign exchange to the Turkish lira, then make the transfer to Syria using the, the Turkish banks, which it has in the north uh, uh, west of Syria branches using the Turkish lira, then purchase US dollar once again and settle our payments using that. And also this exposure us to severe exchange gain and losses. Uh, from the most important issues, we, uh, we uh, believe that we need to have something reflected in the uh, IFRS for MBOs. 
the presentation of the financial statements. If we speak about the income statement, how we classify and present the income and expenses uh, for the statement of financial position. There are uh, some important issues like, uh, for example, uh, if we have assets on a specific project, do we recognize it or not? If we sign an agreement and it's between two physical years, uh, shall we recognize it or, or not for the gift in kind if we receive it without uh, its values, how we are going to, to evaluate it and reflect it in our financial statements. Uh, from also the, the important issues, uh, also, um, uh, you know, normally the difference between the uh, assets and the abilities, it's the, the equity in the for-profit, but for the non-profits, it's net, net assets, for example, and there are classifications for that. So if there is report or specific practices reflecting that, it will be highly appreciated. So there will be standard practice for that. Uh, from our experience, also, we faced issues related to um, to the uh, uh, severance payment and compensations relevant to, uh, to the employees and contractors. Um, as you know, there is international accounting standards number 19 in the for-profit. There is no equivalent in the non-profit and it was always an issue of argument, with arguments between our uh, some of our donors and also some of our uh, auditors. Uh, also, uh, um, uh, in regarding regarding to the to the auditing firms and practices, in some cases we we face problems um, uh, relevant to the classification of the finding. Uh, level of risk uh, and the justification beyond that and uh, also some cases if they do not understand the context uh, or they do not know um, the local legislations or, or legal requirements so we are facing our problems with them. Uh, there is also um, an issue relevant to uh, in some contexts um, uh, we are forced to use cash uh, extensively because there are no functional banking systems uh, which create uh, a problems uh, and also audit findings. Um, so the context shall be considered when dealing with uh, with NGO and the availability of the uh, uh, financial service providers apart from from their type, whether they are um, uh, legislated under central government legislations or they are not, uh, depending on the context. Uh, and um, using multi-currencies in such cases. Also, we have an, an, an issues in, in Russia uh, relevant to recognizing the expenses uh, where uh, um, the, the approach said that the expenses shall be recognized just when, for example, deliver donation for a specific uh, party and then submitting the report to the donor, then it's accepted to recognize the expenses uh, mm -hmm. in, in the financial report. Also, another issue from 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 Russia, um, the issue relevant to using the, the accrual base or, or cash base. There is an entity which it has influence, strong influence. Which it's not government entity, but it has um, a strong influence uh, on uh, that, and they are uh, claiming to prepare the financial statements based on the accrual base and the cash base in parallel, not only depending on uh, on uh, one base. Um, so. Uh, uh, also, um, uh, the issues related to the taxation uh, exemption uh, from that and how to deal with that. Um, so the, those are the main uh, accounting issues uh, which has been discussed in our group. Over from Brilliant. my side. Thank you. Thank you, Mema. Another long list of, of, of issues um, equally well nuanced for us, which is really helpful. So thank you. Um, the exchange rate um, issue is one that we've seen come up several times um, and uh, it's, for us I think the issue is probably less about how to account for it but more about how to present it um, and it, so I think we um, that's what we've heard in other places so trying to kind of fine-tune that and get to what will be really helpful for people um, is, is something that we really need to do. Um, that has been really great. It has been um, delightful to hear all of your, your feedback and I thank you so much for your participation. I'm just going to hand you back now to, to Sam um, to close out our meeting today. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Karen. I know I've had my video off for some, but I've really enjoyed listening. It's been really stimulating and really interesting hearing your views 
your comments and perspectives today. As Karen said, it really gives us a great uh, sense of perspective. Um, so thank you so much. It gives us color and a regional view of some of these issues that we've been discussing. As a reminder, again, all the lovely conversations we've had today don't constitute a formal response to the consultation paper. But hopefully our discussion has helped you to clarify some of the proposals and your view on them. And hopefully you've got some views that you would like to share. So the most important next step is uh, that we'd just love to encourage you to go ahead and submit your own formal response, either as an individual or as an organization. As a reminder, the closing dates are the 30th of July for part one and the 24th of September. That feels a bit of a way away, but you'll obviously find it easier to respond to part one while these issues are fresh in your mind. Uh, and we showed you earlier how to do this, and there'll also be, as I said, a link in a follow-up email. So you might be curious to know what will actually happen to your responses. So we'll be analysing them from quarter three, 2021, this year, and using that information to shape the development of the draft guidance. So as I said, it will depend a bit on the quantity of responses, but our hope is to issue draft guidance for comment in 2023. We'll also continue the outreach work following our stakeholder engagement strategy to try and ensure that all groups with an interest and with influence over the outcome are aware and able to input. But we would love your help and support with that. If you have colleagues, friends, uh, connections within your community and um, environment that you could help bring in, that would be fantastic. Uh, yeah. So how can you stay connected and engaged during this process <coughs> or help others too? So please do subscribe to our quarterly newsletter. I'm just going to pop uh, the link in the chat there. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's quarterly and there should be one coming out soon. So please, uh, if you haven't done so already, do subscribe to that. Um, Please also follow us on social media, particularly LinkedIn and Twitter, if you're active on those uh, sites. And then if you comment or share or like our posts, they get seen by more people and we can have more voices um, being heard in this process. You can also always email myself um, or the project, and I'll put that in the chat as well. If you have any query or something that you'd like to reach out on, we'd really, really love to hear from you. Um, so after this event, we will be sending an email with the PowerPoint presentation, a recording, and these will also be available on the, on the website. So feel free to share that with, with people that you know. We've got a couple more events lined up. Um, one for the Caribbean this evening. Uh, we've got one for North Africa and the Middle East next week, and then Francophone, Western Central Africa on the 1st of June. So again, if you know anybody who you think would be interested, please do let them know. So finally, before we close, it'd be great to get a photo. So uh, if you wouldn't mind turning on your video, if you've got uh, the ability to do that, and I'm gonna ask for a smile and we'll take a quick screen grab. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if, if any of the others there, Noor or um, Marlon, um, if you're able to turn on your video just very briefly, if you're, if you're happy to do that, it just helps us um, show that there's, there is human faces to all this tech <laughs> accounting talk, there's uh -huh. real people in the real world. So here we go, three, two, one, smile. Got it, that's fantastic. So thank you very, very much. Um, once again, your time, I know it's been a long meeting today, your efforts, your insights and useful information you've shared. We really appreciate it and look forward to engaging with you as we continue this brave, bold journey of developing the world's first internationally applicable financial reporting guidance for nonprofits. And look, so thank you so, so much and have yourself a great week and stay in touch. Yeah, and look out for the part two webinars, which will be coming later, later on this year. So... Uh... Thank you all so much. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. The, the